Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, we're talking about the TCG, and more specifically, post-memory, or Maze of Millennium, which is not Maze of Memories, which is a different site. <laughs> but, uh, post-Maze Ma Maze of Millennium, the very first set in the new year, what is the meta going to be shaping up to be? Now, if you don't know, Maze of Millennium has basically one important card and two archetypes that are basically non-existent. Uh, those two archetypes are the Earthbound Immortals and... Oh, um, Flame Swordsman. The Flame Swordsman archetype. <clears throat> now, um, the, the other important card is Bonfire. If you don't know what Bonfire does, imagine Rhoda, but for fires. That's basically it. Um, and this card is the entire reason to even look at the set and the only reason why people will be buying anything from this set realistically. Uh, yeah, that card's absolutely insane and it is going to change up the meta for quite some time. Um, yeah, Rhoda is a really good card. Turns out when you make it for fire types, it's also pretty good given the fact that Diabell Star exists and so does Rescue Ace and so does all of that jazz. So yeah, we're going to just do a quick analysis of uh, of the metagame and what I expect it to do well. Starting off here with Rika, Sun Avalon, I expect it to be Rogue. Realistically, I don't expect this deck to be topping tournaments very consistently, nor doing very well in said tournaments, even when they do show up. So, yeah, potentially someone like Jessica could still take uh, a, a tournament in Europe, because Europe is free. So, yeah, I don't expect this to do well, but it could top, it could win, I don't expect it, okay, yeah, it's Rick Sun Avalon, it didn't really get anything, and honestly, the metagame has only gotten stronger, I do expect this to do worse, by quite a bit. Next up, we have Branded Chimera, which is honestly just cope, I, I don't understand why in the TCG we've decided to not play, like, branded the way that it's currently played in the OCG, where it's more so focusing on the actual branded stuff, and we've instead decided to play Branded Chimera, that just seems like branded players are just worse in the TCG. I genuinely don't understand that. Um, brand, granted, branded Chimera is still pretty decent. Uh, but I don't think it's really that great in the current metagame. I just don't think it really does enough. I feel like there's not as many options available to it uh, for it to really win games, especially in a best of three. So there's that. <clears throat> but yeah, moving on to our first tier one. Rescue Ace, Diabell Star. Yeah, Rescue Ace is absolutely insane. With the support of the new Bonfire on top of the Diabell Star stuff, allowing it to access all of the very powerful fire engines, as well as just being able to consistently spit out a lot of monsters due to things like Ash and um, uh, Snake Eyes Ash, not the Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, which now we have to uh, <clears throat> differentiate, which is annoying. But Rescue Ace is absolutely insane. It still does the set four. It can now go into things like Baron or what have you uh, on top of all of that other stuff while also then going into more Link monsters like SP Little Knight, etc. It just makes this an entirely new beast. Um, and it, it was the best deck in the previous format and it's still going to be one of the best decks in the current format. Moving on, we have... Orcist, which just recently came off of the Forbidden and Limited list. And honestly, with things like Horus and with the a rise of, well, not the rise, but with having access to three Gearsu and just overall having graveyard decks be pretty decent right now, I kind of want to put it in Rogue, but I think it's honestly kind of worse than that. I'll put it in Rogue for now, but we'll see as the rest of this uh, shapes out whether or not I want to move it lower because, yeah, it could do well and I did it did top an event um, but I really don't know how well that is the pilot doing very well or Orcist actually being good. Next up, we have Labyrinth. The question is, do I put Labyrinth in Tier 1 or Tier 2? Labyrinth, I think, is a very, very strong deck, and getting access to the new trap card that allows them to do even more is very nice. Um... That basically makes them about as good as they are in the in the OCG, but in the TCG. Uh, they also have more floodgates that are actually useful, like skill drain and stuff. So there's that. However, 
I think it's not quite as strong as things like Rescue Ace or other such strategies. Uh, so there's that. Still good, but meh. Next up, we have Mana. <sighs> Mana Dimian losing Isold doesn't really matter, but Mana Dimian... What else does Mana do? Mana's okay. Um, I don't know if Tier 2 is where I want to put it. I'm going to put it in Tier 2 for now. It might go down to Rogue. Depending on how the rest of this tier list shapes out. Mana's pretty decent. It's one of the better better combo decks, but with Droll being a very strong option in both main and sideboards, it does make sense as to why this would have issues. However, without things like Maxi or what have you, um, and with the metagame being stronger, it, I don't know. It's somewhere around Tier 2. I don't think it's the best deck, uh, but I don't think it's the worst. <clears throat> Centurion is like the definition of a rogue deck. It's fine. Uh, it can top. It can do well. I don't expect it to do too, too well, but it is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it's going to get Calamity banned. Next up, we have Dark World. Dark World technically received a new card. I don't really think it's going to do all that much. Um, Dark World just kind of loses to itself or wins without opponent interaction. Uh, however, most of the time, it loses. That's basically it. Uh, it folds to very clear interactions. It also folds very easily to things like Droll, which is already going to be pretty common in board. Um, so, I don't know. It's fine. Uh, I might, I, I probably would put it lower. Uh, or, um, well, it's fine. It's Rogue. Maybe. I'm actually just going to move all of these down <clears throat> to everything else. I, 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 I don't really see them topping nearly as much. Maybe they will, but eh, maybe not. Next up, we have Vanquish Soul. Vanquish Soul is okay yeah i don't really have anything else to say vanquish soul's fine um it can do stuff i think most of the people haven't really tried to commit to playing vanquish soul or tried to uh really play it well so i do think that there's a lot of room for improvement it could be better than it actually is uh, i mean in master duel it's like one of the better decks uh but again that's a thing a lower power format so i don't know it's fine Dino's whatever. Uh, Dino's not really been doing anything anytime soon. It does receive a few new cards. They're not great, but eh, it's okay. Sword Soul's really not doing anything right now. Uh, I really wish that this deck was doing better, but honestly, it hasn't really improved in any capacity with the more recent releases, and its game plan is just a little bit too fair at the current moment. Um, that's not entirely true. Like Most of the decks are pretty fair as of right now. Uh, but it just doesn't quite do it as consistently, nor does it end on a board that can't be easily broken by almost every deck in the current format. So that's the big difference. Um, it's still good, but uh, it's definitely, I, I wouldn't even put it in Rogue. Um, yeah, there's that. Next up, Marincess. Uh, I'd put it very similarly. It's fine. It does well. It does cyber stuff. But other than that, again, it's not really doing anything in particular. Uh... Volcanics are not great. <clears throat> RDA is also fine. Red Dragon Archfiend's support is nice, but it's not game-breaking. It's not going to change the metagame by any capacity. So, yeah. Pearly, I think, is still pretty decent in the TCG. Um, I think, like, one card is limited, right? It's just Delicious Memory, if I'm not mistaken. But they still have access to basically all of the other plays. I think it's just a good deck. It's... It does have silver bullets, but basically every deck currently does, besides a very select few. Uh, so because of that, I, I really do feel like it's it's very strong. <clears throat> did it get hit in the most recent badness? I don't think it did, right? Anyway, uh, Salomon Great is interesting. I feel like it could be rogue, especially with the addition of Bonfire. Uh, although, does Bonfire only search Pyros? I don't remember. Anyway, uh, I still feel like it's a it's a decent deck, and uh, I could see it topping uh, pretty regularly. <clears throat> Black wings are just bad. I'm not gonna explain that one. Dragon Link is in an interesting spot at the current time. Uh, it does lose out on quite a lot, I believe. I think Chaos Space is limited. I know the Baby Dragons are limited. I know Chaos Rulers banned and stuff like that. Um, Strikers at one. Yeah, this deck doesn't really do a whole lot. That's it. It's it's just not great. Um, it's fine, though. Like, it, it's definitely good, but it's just not that great. I've been talking about 
<clears throat> other decks that are going to be good in uh, for a while now. And yeah, it's it's Fire King. I think this is pretty self-explanatory if you know anything about the TCG or about the future in the OCG or anything like that. Yeah, Fire King is absolutely insane. Um, I don't really have anything to talk about with this deck other than it just kind of does everything. Um, it plays on your turn. It plays on its own turn. It can exe on your turn. It is consistent. It has very interesting form or like unique forms of interaction with like non-target pops, uh, with uh, consistently special summoning and stuff like that. <clears throat> Uh, it has one card combo starters. It has the ability to dodge interactions. So yeah, it just kind of does everything that it that you would need to in a modern deck. And it's getting even better with the DFL star stuff, adding in additional forms of interactions and additional bodies to put onto the field to go into more extra deck plays. It also has now the ability to use bonfire, which is crazy. So yeah, just everything for this deck is going well. Um. <clears throat> Not gonna lie, while the new Earthbound Immortal stuff is very cool, it's not good. It is cool, I do really like the idea of the deck and I do really like the way that it plays, but it's just not very good. Next up, Unchained. I think Unchained is actually uh, also pretty good. I'm actually gonna put it above mana. Uh, I think it's strong, I think it has a lot still going for it, even post ban list, but this may just me be, may be me being on copium um i'm actually gonna put it lower now that i'm thinking about it it's fine i think i think it's okay uh, i definitely expect it to top more so than a lot of these other ones and uh, i expect it to still see it in the metagame uh makonko's makonko is interesting because most of the time makonko was being used with like infernoble with the um soul day lines and stuff like that and now with his soul day band eh, probably not also notably Infernoble itself isn't on this list. Unless this is Infernoble, which I don't think it is. But it might be. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about Infernoble, so don't worry about that. But as far as Makonko style Infernoble, I really do think that this version dies, more or less. And uh, it's going to be more of the Makonko centric style sure Infernoble might still be in there but it's going to be more focused on going second or um otking or setting up non-targets um which isn't really great in the current metagame so there's that um sprite's pretty good sprite has basically no hits and is still a decent list yeah i don't really have anything else to say sprite's just like good as of right now um i think it's better than branded but not by much uh, I would, I, I don't know. Sprite just doesn't do well in the TCG. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, it seems like it would do pretty well. It's fully unhit. I think people just don't necessarily play it. Because it's not new. That's basically it. Um, Tier Lament has been doing pretty well as well. So I'm going to put it pretty high. Um... Yeah, even post ban list, you could still play like the Horus stuff. I think Tier Lament is probably a bit slept on, um, but I still, I yeah, it's still pretty good. Next up, we have Runic variants. Uh, they're probably one of the better of the decks. Put it here, I guess. Um, Kashira has also been doing pretty well as well. More of a, a control style strategy instead of the um, like floodgate style. That sounds kind of weird. But instead of focusing on summoning out a big boss monster that banishes, you're now focusing on kind of playing it slow, generating advantage, and uh, just kind of like pushing through with the massive Fenriers and Unicorns and stuff like that. <clears throat> Next up, we're going to talk about the new... Um, what is what what is this? Flame Swordsman. Now... I'm putting it in Rogue here, and at the top of Rogue, because I do imagine that this version of, Fl or more specifically, Infernoble slash Flame Swordsman um, is going to be a pretty decent deck. Maybe not the best of decks, but definitely playable. Uh, but I'm also going to basically use this as a marker for Infernoble. Infernoble lost a lot more than something like Abandoned Dimian did in terms of a combo deck that utilizes um, 
Isolde. Mana doesn't use Isolde, but kind of they do the similar things where they basically make unbreakable boards and then go from there, right? And uh, Infernoble definitely lost more, so I'm going to put it in Rogue for now. Maybe you use the Fire Sword or Flame Swordsman stuff. You probably don't, though, but maybe. Who knows? And then Flu. Uh, yeah, Flunder's pretty freaking good. That That's all. That's all I have to say. Flunder's pretty good. Um, I'm probably going to put it below Vanquish Roll, but it's still decent. I could expect tops from it, right? So, yeah, that's basically it for this list. Um, I think I am going to move Labyrinth up. I think, I think it's still pretty decent. Uh, anything else I want to change? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull these two down. These three? These two. Um, I'm also going to move this one down. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, we'll do this. This is more or less what I would expect the TCG to be looking like in the coming metagame. Uh, I do really expect it to mostly be... Actually, I'm going to move this down again, now that I'm thinking about it. I really do expect it to be basically just Fire King and Rescue Ace. And then maybe a few other decks sprinkled in here or there, but it's mostly going to be Fire-centric metagame for quite some time. Bonfire is a heck of a card. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, I hope that you guys did indeed enjoy it. If you did, a like is very much so appreciated. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh!, then just be sure to subscribe. <clears throat> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and remember to, remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.